Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're going to rebuild one of my all-time favorite carburetors, the Rochester Quadrajet. And I know some of you guys out there are going, you can't do one of them Rochester Quadrajets and Quadra Bog. I'm going to get one of them dang dong them holly smoke retired from here to Mississippi. And I'm going to go, what? But first, we're going to get this thing completely apart. So, let's go! With literally millions of Rochesters out there, you need to find this number on your carburetor. It's at the back here, stamped. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but you take that number to your auto parts store and say, I need a kit for this carb. They'll get you a kit. You can see the kit for this one on the bench. Then we can strip the whole thing apart. This one has an electric choke. I drilled out the rivets, not quite with the right size. I think it was to be a number 23 drill. I did that later, but you can pop out the electric choke thing. It's just a bimetallic coil. And then you don't necessarily have to disconnect everything on the choke, but I do. Once we get, well, at some point you want to get through the accelerator pump lever. There's a pin. You push it most of the way through with a pin punch, but still not quite enough space or at least enough space. So you can get a flat blade screwdriver to push it back. Then you can undo all the rest of the screws. Um, and this thing is actually it's, I just pulled it out of a junkyard. I wandered around to see if somebody had taken off a Rochester and left it. And uh, this was what I, what I found. So I picked it up and I've used it for some engines at school. Um, disconnecting the air cleaner stud. We removed all the other screws on the top. And these are your primary needles. The thin ones right here, bit of corrosion on there. They meter your fuel. These are the secondary needles for metering your fuel there. Inside... Ew, disgusting. It's like this thing collected some kind of disastrous mess and we're going to try and clean it out. The, I think it's the power piston, might not be the right term, but that moves the needles down. So the fatter part of the needle plugs the jets at uh, high vacuum. And then at low vacuum, a spring pushes those little needles up to give you more fuel. Kind of cool. This is a cool tool I made out of a 3 8 bolt. Uh, last Rochester I did, I modified it so I can adjust this little guy, which is your adjustable part throttle. It's kind of like an adjustable stop for the needles for your power piston. These are the main jets for the primary side. The secondaries don't come out, but the primaries do, and you can change them. They're usually the same left and right, so it doesn't really matter which way they go in. One thing I've learned in carburetors is have the right gosh darn screwdriver for doing what you want to do so you don't destroy the jets. This is much like the float in your toilet bowl. And when it runs low on fuel, it, it goes down and lets more fuel come in. This one's weird. It's got really loose throttle plates. That's unusual. Or at least I think it's unusual. It's not good. We're going to fix that. The base plate comes off. Three screws comes off pretty easy. These are notorious for leaking right here. A uh, little hammered in lead plug sometimes leak. And especially the big silver ones that you see under my hand there. Uh, they are notorious for leaking. There's a variety of different ways of, of fixing that ailment, but we're going to do one. Cleaning and scraping all the goo off of the bottom. Apparently, if you put a little bit of uh, chapstick on the gaskets, they don't bake themselves on quite as dramatically. We're not going to do that. Uh, one thing that these are notorious for is people clamp them down way too tight. So I'm checking with uh, a straight edge to see how bad this air horn is. Uh, but people definitely really over tighten. Not so much here, but definitely on the primary side. Um, There's got a little bit of a warpage too. Not usually a big issue. This one, I've filed carburetors flat again. I've pressed them to get them flat again. The main thing is don't over tighten those bolts on the front of the carb. This one, surprisingly really good. See that silver plug? That gives you access to the adjustable part throttle. I'm going to pound it out, and we're going to make it uh, accessible with a threaded plug. I'll show you that in a bit. So Rochester's get a pretty bad reputation for bogging if they're poorly adjusted. And the big secondary air door on the top there, it will open when there's enough air trying to get into the engine. You can adjust how easy or how difficult it is for these to open. And they're usually poorly adjusted. Uh, we're going to adjust it later on. It's, it's a tunable. They're so tunable. Um, what else we got going on here? Just cleaning and looking for stuff. The base plate, these, another thing these are notorious for is uh, worn out throttle bushings. 
And there's ways you can deal with that. This carb is also really good. It's a, quite a surprise to me how well it is. What I have done in the past is I've machined a cutter like this that references the bore through the carburetor and then cuts away. And then I can just crazy glue in some uh, bronze bushings that you get at any auto parts store. And then uh, it takes all of the slop out of it. So I'm snugging up the screws for the throttle plates. You kind of want to be making sure that nothing is, it, we want to make sure that throttle plate fits the bore just perfectly. And it takes a little bit of wiggling and moving and making sure the throttle oop, opens super smoothly. You don't want it to catch or bind or start to machine the size of the bore away. So at this point, I'm really just going over the carburetor and checking things and looking for the typical problem areas and looking for anything that seems unusual to me so that I can try and mess with it. And I've done a small handful of Rochesters, but one of the cool things that I, another one of the cool things I find tunable with this is these passages right here. This is your idle air bypass, and they let air get in under the throttle plate. So if you, so you can keep the throttles reasonably well closed. There's a slotted transition port that lets fuel through under cruise. You can see that slot there pointing at it with my pinky fingers. You don't want to have that totally, totally uh, exposed. If you've got a big camshaft that doesn't draw very much vacuum, you're going to need to open the uh, throttles quite a bit to get it to idle. Or you get in here and drill out the idle air bypass bigger and bigger and bigger until you can keep those throttle plates almost closed. For whatever the width the, of the transition slots are, I like to have about that in height of it exposed. And then you just keep drilling and drilling and drilling until this thing will will breathe through all these passages all the way up to the top of the carburetor. Down in the bottom of this hole is the little ball that kind of keeps fuel in for the accelerator pump circuit. You get a new one in your kit, but it took me a bit of uh, playing to get that guy out. It was definitely stuck in there. So this is an ultrasonic cleaner. I just got this. Um, as an experiment to see how well it does on carburetors. I've done a bunch of different ways of cleaning carbs. You can buy uh, aerosol cans of carb cleaner, and this is horrifically sped up. Okay, You can see the clock was just clicking by. This thing heats, which is pretty cool. I think I got her up to about 80 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, that got a little bit too, too warm for me to put my hands in. I've used, uh, way back when I was a mechanic, we had a big pail, like a 20 liter pail of carb cleaner, and you just put everything in a basket, soak it in the carb cleaner, it smelled wonderful, it stained your hands permanently, um, and the carb would come out just absolutely spit clean, and it didn't seem to damage anything on the carb. I have cleaned carburetors with a 50-50 mix of water and pine sol, but be forewarned, the pine sol will pull off the protective coatings of your carburetor and then it'll corrode. That may not be what you want. I've tried uh, solvents on the carb, not just for myself. I've tried, oh man, aerosol carb cleaners, I probably mentioned that. There's lots of different ways you can clean this. I have seen people use like a baking soda blast kind of thing, like soda blasting, but I haven't tried that yet. This one was the filthiest piece, and I ran it for like, it'll run for 30 minutes and then shut off. So I just went and did other things in the shop. And then I'd come back and I'd inspect it, and I'd flip it over and run it for another 30 minutes. And i flip it over and run another 30 minutes. And I flipped it over another 30 minutes. It took hours to clean this. But um, this is my first time doing ultrasonic cleaning with a carb. I bet if you got in there with like a little acid brush or something, you could probably do okay. This I'm putting the bottom in the tray, but I later got rid of the basket. It just didn't really fit all that well. And that one I think I ran for about an hour, uh, maybe an hour and a half. And the top I did maybe 20 minutes, no, 20, like 30 minutes, maybe an hour, I don't remember. But it sure came out pretty nice and clean. In this case, just to speed things up, I went and got an acid brush. You use those for putting glue on things. And I just got into the nooks and crannies to see how well is this coming clean. It doesn't have to be uh, like like mirror finish clean or nothing. You just don't want any debris that could be plugging uh, air passages or ports or jets. You, you just want it clean. So I just kind of gave this one a once over with a brush in the interest of time. But uh, much happier. I think I had about, I don't know, a couple little squirt of dollar store dish soap in here. 
If it can do dishes, it's probably good for a carb. And then we begin the assembly. Now, let's look at that APT, adjustable part throttle. There, I just got a socket and a punch and a hammer. And with three hands, you just punch that guy out. It's not in super tight. There it is, gone. Then, a 3 8 coarse tap. I, cou I couldn't see this on the screen. I hope it shows up. 3 8 uh, 16, I think, UNC. And just gently, gently thread it, but not all the way through. You want it to still be a little tapered at the bottom of the hole so that when we put uh, a set screw in, it bottoms and seals. So you don't want to thread this all the way through. So I try, I'll fit the 3 8 set screw. I think it's about a quarter inch or 3 8 deep. I don't remember. Whatever the smallest size is that come. And then either some gentle tapping a little bit more, or I did a little bit of that, or I think I filed or belt sanded a little bit of the top of the screw off. You can see it's shiny there. And just snug so that no dirt really gets in. What you want it to be is set like that and just thread her in and nice and flat and flush. The set screw, even though it's got a hex on it, will be mo enough adequately covered with the air horn or air filter gasket that it's not going to be an issue. So this is one of the methods of uh, sealing up the pesky leaking plugs on the bottom of the Rochester. I don't see an evidence of these ones leaking, but this can work. I have seen where folks grind out the lead plugs and then thread them and put set screws in to seal them all up, and I think that's a better way to go. But this carburetor is going to be on dead engines in the school shop, and I'm not actually going to be driving this to California. So I'm not worried. They do leak through those little passages in the base plate, and then you get a rich mixture. So open the kit, pull out some of the parts, and then many of the parts are pretty much the same for all the carburetors, but you may have a couple little differences, and you just got to figure out which ones have you got. What does your carburetor need? And I always keep all the extras because you never know when you might need something. So a couple screws, put the base plate back on. There is a tricky part coming on soon, but I'll show you that when we get there. So it looks like the needle and seat. This is a little different than the one I took out of it. It's got these open spaces at the bottom, which I think would be good for getting more fuel past the needle and into the float bowl. The float bowl on a Rochester is really small. You may find some with a different size feed inside. The bigger the hole, the more fuel it will feed. However, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot more pressure before it overpowers the float. So uh, I don't know if it matters all that much. Again, you want the right size screwdriver so you don't wreck your jets. And then just snug the jets. You don't have to kill them. They, they don't usually fall out. Little, this is the APT. goes into the bottom. I counted four and a half turns out from seated when I took it out. So I'm setting it back at uh, that. Now this is the power piston spring. You can get them in a kit like this. I have three of the four that come with it. And then one that's probably unlabeled. And these... They're rated at engine vacuum levels. So if you're, uh, or at least, yeah, at vacuum levels. So when do they push the piston up? So I take my idle vacuum and pick a spring that's half of that. This little guy goes on the needle itself to help it hook onto the float. And I'm kind of showing you how it goes, where it goes. So when you're looking at the kit, you're like, oh, oh that's what he's talking about. It's a little hard to get my fingers around it, I know, with gloves, and I'm arthritic. So that's kind of what it looks like. Just clips on like so. Do you need it? Probably work without it, but you want to keep it there. And then we set that in place. Now, some carburetors, I've set the float level just by tipping the whole thing upside down and going for the float to be level. But in the case of Rochester's, it's actually really affected by the float level adjustment. Oh, yeah, a new ball to go in there. And that's the holder down and aider that goes in place. So the kit usually comes with a uh, ruler of sorts, a paper ruler. So you get that ruler and just gently push the float so that it comes up. And then you measure to the top of the carburetor body and see what that height is. I think this one was like 13, 30 seconds. I can't remember. 
yeah, 13, 30 seconds. And it was actually bang on for a 350 Chevy V8. So that's cool. This spring is for the accelerator pump. That squirts a bit of fuel in the carburetor when you step on the gas right away. They don't always survive with ethanol blended fuels, just so you know. And then the power piston goes in. I just put the original spring back in because I don't know what kind of vacuum the engine's going to have. If you haven't messed with your engine, it makes things easier. So this goes in. There's a little plastic kind of ring on the top of the power piston that jams itself into its um, tube, I guess. And the little pin goes on the APT to set how far it comes down when the engine has vacuum and pulls that down to reduce the flow of fuel through the jets. The carburetor has a little, or the carburetor gasket has a couple little slits in it so you can feed this thing over and then you can put the air horn on in a moment. I have to back up and do the choke. This is really kind of annoying but it actually went really well on video which was a surprise. And then this is how the choke goes back together. One screw holds it into place. Some Rochesters are electric choke. Some use heat from the exhaust and intake manifold. Some use uh, a cable going into the passenger compartment. I have seen some carburetors that use uh, engine coolant to help the choke apply. I think that's pretty smart, actually. Whatever your carburetor has, that's what you're going to put back in. And I'm making sure that the choke actually is operating the way I think it should be. And the pull-off, I think it's called. Anyways, a bunch of springs, screws, plates, all this stuff goes back together. It's smart, and I probably should mention this at the start. You should take pictures of how your carburetor looks before you take it apart. Because if you can't remember where it goes, it's like a jigsaw puzzle with no picture on the box. A little bit of a challenge. And don't forget, there's two wee countersunk screws in the air horn here in the close to the venturi in the primary side. Don't forget about putting those back in place. Secondary needles go in. They're done on the outside, which is kind of nice. Last little bracket for the choke. And again, this carburetor is not going in any running vehicles. Oh, yeah. There's that screwdriver prying the pin back into place. So I want to make this choke adjustable. It's actually... I mean, I got a new gasket and everything. I drilled these out. I think it was a number 23. And then the kit came with self-tapping screws. But what I want to be able to do is to adjust this. So I set this in place and find, oh, it, it locks into place and I can't adjust it at all. That's annoying. And as a control freak, I don't like this. So I do the thing that I need to do, which is hammer and chisel. And I take that little stopping block in there out. Oh, and now I can adjust the choke wherever I want. Since these just go on engines in the shop that the kids work on, I want the choke to not be on so that I can it doesn't flood and uh, it's just easy to get the thing going. So new screws. I used the original holder downinators, air cleaner stud, and uh, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff on there. All right, the secondary air valve, not that we're ever going to use it. You loosen off a locking set screw on the bottom, and then you play with the with a wee flat blade screwdriver, the tension on the spring controlling this. And you, if with enough experience, you can go by feel, or you can fine-tune it to your vehicle. But there it is. One Rochester, cleaned, put together, adjustable, all man. And there's the final put back together of a Rochester Quadrajet. You saw the taking it apart, the cleaning, the putting back together. We'll probably do the adjusting and tuning at another date, but this is one of my favorite carburetors. I also particularly like doing the uh, adjustable part throttle mod in there so I can screw with the mid tuning, uh, not just idle and full throttle. But uh, for now, that's uh, Rochester. We're going to stick it on an engine in the shop and uh, see if it works once the kitties put the engines back together. So, as always, thanks for watching. Take care.